Hey guys, Rick for Songs here, back with another video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to mix a drop in FL Studio. So, I'm gonna show you how I mix my track, Mammoth Tomorrow. It already did over 400,000 streams. So, I think it's the right example to show you how to mix a track properly. So, the final result will sound like this. So now we're gonna dive into the mixing project. I rendered all the stems out from the original project just to mix it properly. So we have a few main elements like the drums, the fix, the basses, the guitars, the break synths, which we're not gonna dive into because we're gonna make the drop, ambiences, and fix and risers. So first let's start off with the drums. As you can see, there's a parallel compression bus going on as well, sounding like this. But we're gonna dive into that later. First, the drums, we have the kick drum, which we lower down 60 Bs. Then we mix the snares to it, which we just EQ, just cut out lows, make some dips, cut out some nasty frequencies. Then we layered it with, another, with two other snares. So it makes the snare a bit more punchy. So we just EQ it to fit it in more with the other snare. And we compressed it quite heavily, as you can see. So without sound like this and with it fits more, it fits way better in the mix. Then after this small snare, it's actually a copy of the second snare. It makes the snare a bit more punchy. Just get some more emphasis on the punch of the snare. With, without and with. Then we add some more snares to it, just in the background. So the volume is really low. And again, just some basic EQing and some reverb to an added hi hat. But again, just some EQing. It's all basic stuff going on. No professor things yet. Same for the crash. Just some EQing again. It's all making room for all the elements in the mix. You have this drum fill, and again, just some EQ in. Some reverb to lay it in a bit more in the back of the mix. And then the last drum stem. Again, just some EQ in and some compression. Just make sure the attack is quite slow because you don't want to lose the punch of the, of the percussion. So then all the drums are routed to the per percussion bus. With just some queuing. Some clue compression to fit the drums more to each other. Some really low reverb. And again, some more queuing to bring out the highs a bit more in the percussion. So I think the most important thing we have in the percussion is the parallel compression bus without and with it really brings up the drums a bit more. So what we did is we rendered the drums to this drum stem. Just make sure to uh, make sure to EQ out all the lows. And then we compress it quite heavily with a mix at 100%. Just around 80 bs compression, and then just mix it in with the other drum stems. And that's it for the drums. So now let's dive into the basses. So now we're gonna dive into the bass line. We only have one bass element in the track, sounding like this. It's without effects. With effects, it sounds like this. So what we did is just first we EQ'd out all the highs for the sound. Then we added some saturation. I felt like there was missing some frequencies at around 80 to 200 hertz. So we distorted quite heavily with a drive at 90%. And then the second thing we did is bring out the mids of the bass a bit more to make it more audible. 
at laptop speakers. So we just distorted a little bit and took back the, vol the volume to compensate for the distortion. So I really think the saturation makes a different difference in 808s. Then we compressed it quite heavily. Just to make sure it's loud enough. And then just more queuing to make sure there ain't any highs and bass sounds anymore. Then finished off we add some queuing. So in the track it sounded like this. Then added some multiband compression with a kick drum. Just to glue the kick and bass together. So we compressed it at around 100 to 500 hertz. And at a really low end. Just to make sure the bass is really tight. And that's the bass line, so now I added the horn brass to it. Sounding like this. So I just cut off on the lows, add some saturation to it, just some warm tape distortion in the mids, and then some reverb, just a small one, and some EQ to make sure the reverb doesn't bring any more lows, and just to dip the highs a little bit more. So before and after. So all together all elements sound like this. So now it's time to dive for the lead elements. So now we're gonna mix in the lead elements. So in this track it's the the guitar chords and the guitar lead sounding like this. So in other tracks it could be your lead sound or your chord sound. So first let's dive, let's dive into the chords. First thing we did is add some EQ in. As you already know, just make sure the lows aren't in there. Dipping some annoying frequencies, boosting a little bit. And then we just remove some nasty frequencies. Like this one. And this one. So what we have to do is just Load up the Fat Photo EQ and just search for the nasty frequencies. So, for example, we could, add, we could cut out this one as well. Then we compress it just to make sure it's loud enough with quite a fast EQ, uh, with, fact, with quite a fast attack and around 2 to 3 dB of reduction. Then some reverb and delay. Then we have the lead sound sounding like this. So without without all mixing, it sounds like this. So it's quite nasty. So the first thing we did is add EQ. Just cutting out all the nasty frequencies like this. This one, this one. And this one. So as you can hear there's quite some nasty frequencies in it, so. I always recommend to just make sure to cut them out immediately because otherwise in the mastering it will sound really bad. Next time more compression around 2 to 3 dB as well. It's a really fast attack. Next some reverb and delay. Sounding like this. And some more EQing just to make sure the lows aren't in there for the reverb and delay and some more EQing because it was still resonating a little bit. So without EQing we took it from this to this and together with the chords it sounded like this. And the track it sounded like this. So now it's time to mix the ambiences so we have this bird effects. Just don't care too much about it, make sure the volume is low enough so you won't really hear it in the track. I'm going, there are just some crashes for the effects and risers. So don't care too much about it as well, just make sure 
there's no mixing it on it, so isn't that important. And the last thing we have is the buffer fix. With just a siren. It's not a small fix, so those aren't really important as well, just make sure the volume is really low. And that's it for the how to mix and drop in FS Studio tutorial. So if you like the video, please leave a like to see more and subscribe button and I'll see you all in the next videos.